What could truly mass-produce diesel motorcycles of different classes be like? For example, a touring diesel motorcycle would be able to travel 900 kilometers on a single tank. A diesel sport bike, yes, you heard that right, would indeed have more torque than a Triumph Rocket 3, actually. An enduro bike with a diesel heart could run on any type of fuel, while cruisers would be built using astonishing racing technologies, accelerating to 100 kilometers in less than 4 seconds. All these examples are in today's amateur documentary Diesel Motorcycle, and don't be put off by the strange voiceover, because you're watching the Weird Bike Channel. In the early 21st century, motorcycle makers started testing diesel engines for their enhanced reliability, fuel efficiency, and incredible torque. A small Dutch company decides to create a motorcycle based on a three-cylinder turbo diesel from Volkswagen Lupo, and it was a completely new perspective on a diesel motorcycle compared to any other presented before it, simply because essentially, in terms of dimensions and weight, it is a true sport bike, but with torque figures higher than those of the Triumph Rocket 3. The Thunderstar motorcycle project was initiated by Star Twin co-owner Kies van der Star, who had been observing the production of diesel motorcycles for many years with some dissatisfaction, knowing that new diesel engine developments in the automotive industry could be just as suitable, if not better, for motorcycles than a regular gasoline engine. Diesel motorcycles of the early 2000s, such as Neander and Track Diesel, were very promising projects with huge potential, ready to enter the market. Over time, some of them could indeed be legally acquired, but they did not gain widespread popularity due to either their outdated nature, where such an engine was impractical, or conversely due to excessive complexity in design, making the production of such motorcycles prohibitively expensive. StarTwin's plan and proposal involved an automotive-oriented, already geared towards mass production, technologically advanced three-cylinder turbo diesel. It was later recognized as the most eco-friendly globally with a fuel consumption of just 3 liters per 100 kilometers. Secondly, unlike their competitors, StarTwin began designing a sports motorcycle, attributing this to the complexity of developing sport bikes. Converting a sport motorcycle to a touring or road one is easier than vice versa. Based on this logic, Wonderstar invited Jaron Bernard to collaborate in designing the motorcycle. He designed the motorcycle entirely in 3D before starting its assembly in 2005. In the same year, Startwin unveiled a fully assembled motorcycle at the Motorai Motorcycle Show event in Amsterdam. By the way, Startwin is the oldest Ducati dealer in the Netherlands, which celebrated its 40th anniversary in 2019. Its name may be linked to the Ducati engine's legend, or it could be a playful reference to the owner's surname, the Van der Star brothers Kies and Hans. Thanks to the smart use of lightweight components and economical design, the Thunderstar 1200 TDI weighs only 205 kilograms. Almost everything you see with the naked eye is designed by us, says Star Twins Jerome Bernard. We employed different elements from automobiles and motorcycles. We fabricated car parts to be lighter and enhanced the strength of motorcycle parts. Undoubtedly, the top question authors of diesel sport bikes are asked to this day is about the power unit it possesses. The stock engine of the Volkswagen Lupo has a displacement of 1200 cubic centimeters and delivers 61 horsepower. Like all advanced diesel engines of that time, it can boast direct injection, a turbocharger and an intercooler. At the initial stages, the engine power in the motorcycle had already been increased to 70 horsepower. Later, gradually, they increased the power to 100 horsepower and the torque to an unprecedented 250 for a motorcycle. They gradually raised it to observe and analyze how such a locomotive moment would impact the 5-speed transmission system over time and overall on the motorcycle's design. By the way, the transmission was borrowed from the FJ1200. In addition, Thunderbike is also equipped with quite decent components. 
Many parts are manufactured in the Netherlands, says Bernard. We use the top-of-the-line fork and rear shock absorber from White Power. Both are very lightweight. For example, the front fork tubes are constructed using aluminum. The brakes have been sourced from the British PFM Performance, showcasing ultralight brake discs and radial calipers, in addition to carbon wheels provided by Blackstone Technology. But how does such an exotic vehicle ride, sound and feel overall? The manufacturer responds as follows. Thunderstar rides just like a gasoline-powered sport bike, except of course for the enormous torque. And this is on any gear. This means that you absolutely don't care which gear you're in, because it accelerates quite strongly on each one. Plus, it has a unique sound and you can experience it right now. The production of this sport bike was not planned to be launched into mass production, but the manufacturer did not rule out collaborating with other companies. At that time, Startwin's maximum ambition was to produce only a small batch of motorcycles. According to the creator of Thunderstar, it is a real prototype and was designed accordingly. For example, a new casting method was used for manufacturing the engine casing. Today, an exclusive diesel sport bike can only be found at small moto events. Little is known about its current fate as well as the cost of producing such motorcycles. And even in our days, it can be confidently stated that a diesel motorcycle is a relic of the past. However, 15 to 20 years ago, the concept proposed by Startwin appeared to be very promising. A sport tourer with such an economical and practical heart could and should have occupied its niche, and such vehicles would probably have been on the roads for a very long time. The only significant downside of Thunderstar is its vibration. This is the world's first two-wheeled serial turbo diesel. A high-performance turbo diesel, no vibrations thanks to a brilliant motorsport solution. Since its creation in the late 19th century, the diesel engine has found application in many industries. Whether it is maritime, locomotive or urban transport, in various auto transport or stationary use. This was made possible by its main advantages over the traditional internal combustion engine. 30% lower fuel consumption and a longer service life, often even with more compact sizes. It also appealed to almost all manufacturers of civilian cars. But thus far nobody has managed to merge diesel engines with motorcycle chassis on a mass production scale. The German company Neander planned to change this in the mid-2000s thanks to its innovative diesel engine. Engineer Rupert Beindl utilized actual racing technologies in his engine, which renders it genuinely groundbreaking. First of all, Beindl used the cylinder head layout patented by Austrian engineer Ludwig Apfelbeck, which was used in BMW racing engines in Formula 2 races in the 60s. With this arrangement, the valves were radially positioned. Secondly, Rupert connected each piston in the engine with two connecting rods and two crankshafts which rotate in opposite directions. A similar solution could be found in the previously developed by them Petrol Suzuki Bimar Supermona from the eponymous racing series of the 90s. 
Rupert's 750cc single produced an astonishing 115 horsepower, according to Rupert himself, at an excessive 12,000 revolutions per minute for one cylinder. But why does a diesel cruiser need such complex racing technologies? Radially arranged valves in hemispherical combustion chambers produced a more efficient fuel mixture swirl and had superior heat exchange compared to the classical valve arrangement. During the Opfeldbeck, each intake valve cools the adjacent exhaust valve. With two crankshafts, Pindel eliminated engine vibrations and two connecting rods relieved the piston from lateral loads, thereby making the diesel unit even more durable. The turbo diesel twin with air oil cooling and 1430cc displacement produced 112 GP at 4200 and 240 nanometers at 2600 revolutions per minute. To achieve this, he is aided by the Garrett turbine, which generates 0.4 bars of pressure in a short-stroke diesel engine. Reducing lateral forces on the piston is vital, as the engine faces increased pressure from working gases, with a compression ratio of 16 to 1. The Bosch Common Rail direct injection fuel system is employed in the Neandru engine, which is also equipped with a dry multi-disc clutch and a 6-speed gearbox. All of these components are installed within a frame made of chromoly steel material. In the early prototypes of the motorcycle, a single 43mm inverted fork was used, but in the final version of the motorcycle there were already two in the form of a double telescopic fork, which is also quite unusual. Most likely one couldn't handle such weight, which was 270 kilograms in dry form. Decades later, a similar solution can be seen on the Yamaha Nikin GT. Behind is the Yolens monoshock absorber. Generally, everything is normal for that time. The only thing MoTeC devices hint at is the engine's potential. When you first get acquainted with the motorcycle, you will be pleasantly surprised by several features. First of all, this is a very low seat, only 650 MMI in height. Secondly, after revival, the engine does not produce any vibrations at all. He is strangely immobile no matter how you twist him. The second crankshaft and extra connecting rods work. Up to 2000, the engine gains speed smoothly, enabling worry-free starts. Everything interesting begins after. The peak moment is reached already at 2500 and remains practically horizontal until the peak power bundle claims revving engine to 7000 revolutions per minute was a success. Deceptively dull engine sound has the potential to cause the vehicle to shake at idle speed. This is something you should never do on this motorbike. The engine is simply made for active driving purposes. He comes alive at Garrett's faint whistle which nonetheless is clearly audible over the diesel roar. And perhaps the biggest surprise, after you get used to the idea of riding a diesel motorcycle, will be how lightning fast the engine actually revs up. A short power and torque range will make you work quite well with your left foot, clicking the 6-speed gearbox from Alita Superbike. The max speed of the motorcycle exceeds 240 km per h, surpassing classmates of his time with their 180 km per h. And this was expected as the motorcycle was created in Germany, a country of endless autobahns with no speed limits. Add to this simply negligible fuel consumption with such characteristics. Zero vibrations and you will get simply the perfect motorcycle for long trips. Maybe for someone the motorcycle sound will be a downside. But objectively considering the advantages and exclusivity this diesel offers, it's a small price to pay. Moreover, due to its unique features, the engine's size and weight are not considered disadvantages. Thanks to them, Neander seems like a real brutal cruiser for big uncles. The cylinder block looks really big and powerful, which it actually is. Generally, it appears to be amazing. Just take a look at this monstrous fuel tank with its cool, stylish and impressive air intakes. The only and unfortunately devastating minus turned out to be the price of the product. 85,000 US dollars. If it cost half of this amount, it would already be possible to consider full-scale serial production. Most likely, such a complex and technologically advanced diesel turned out to be too expensive to develop. A total of 250 motorcycles of this type were announced for release. The actual numbers are unknown. Neander 1400 is a big surprise, not only because of its unique technical solutions, but also because of how effectively it applied the advantages of diesel development in a motorcycle. He inspired hope in many during that time, expecting a real turbo diesel era in the motorcycle industry to begin soon.
The global financial crisis and the new trend of nature conservation and fuel consumption reduction contributed to the emergence of interesting and promising diesel motorcycle projects, but the most serious of them appeared to be the project of the Dutch company Evo Products. The Trek T800 CDI motorcycle housed a three-cylinder turbo diesel engine from a smart car, which was so well tuned to the rider's needs that it seemed like a dream motorcycle. Just imagine these numbers. The touring bike, weighing 225 kilograms, accelerates to 100 in 3.7 seconds, reaches a maximum speed of 175 kilometers per hour, and has a range of 900 kilometers on a single tank. It was the top candidate for the title of the first mass-produced diesel motorcycle. The Dutch company Evo Products began developing the Track T800 CDI motorcycle in 2006, and after a period of three years in 2009, gradually established its mass production. This bike has an 800cc three-cylinder turbo diesel engine from Daimler-Benz, like the ones in smart cars, weighing just 45 kilograms without the gearbox and producing 48 GP on the rear wheel, with a torque of 120 newton meters in the range of 850 to 4,250 revolutions per minute. Per owner, Eric Vecht, he had 400 orders. Assembly of first batch of 25 units at 17,500 euros each began. Initially, sales were limited to Europe, but there was also significant interest in the device in North America and Australia. More on this later. To ensure this interest is justified, all you need to do is take a ride on the Trek T800. And to be honest, sitting on the rather high 880mm seat, looking around, it's hard to notice anything exotic. The only surprising thing is the absence of a clutch lever, the transmission being automatic, a CVT. The seat is soft and comfortable, while the high handlebar grips are pulled back, inviting you to embark on long journeys. All you need to start the engine is to turn the key and press the starter button. You don't even need to squeeze the brake lever like on a scooter. The rear wheel brake is operated by a pedal, like a regular motorcycle. However, when starting, it's best not to touch the throttle handle, or you might end up going somewhere you didn't intend. Although the diesel engine's idle noise at 850 revolutions per minute is louder than a typical motorcycle engine, in diesel cars both noise and vibrations are much higher. Starting off is like a scooter, you simply twist the throttle and off you go. The sound is certainly very unusual, but not overly loud or annoying, just different. However, you still feel like you're riding a motorcycle, not a tractor. The characteristic note of the three-cylinder engine, like Triumph or Benelli, is discernible, but it's a couple of octaves lower. The interaction between the turbo diesel and the CVT is intriguing. The transmission removes turbo lag, while simultaneously, when the turbine accelerates, the pickup is smoothed. So the characteristic turns out to be very linear. The more you twist the throttle, the more power you get. Very convenient, especially on wet roads. And in the city, it's just beautiful. The left hand is cramped from constantly squeezing the clutch. The high seating position provides good visibility, and the large steering angle allows for confident maneuvering. The ultimate bike for couriers.
The fully adjustable VP suspensions are perfectly tuned, confidently absorbing all bumps even at high speeds with exceptional precision and control. Moreover, the large wheelbase contributes to the stability of the bike, as engine braking with automatic transmission is fundamentally absent. You have to rely solely on Brembo brakes when you slow down this 225kg machine capable of reaching speeds of up to 175km per hour. However, they perform their job properly, and surprisingly, the motorcycle does not stall even during emergency braking. When you release the throttle, there's some strange noise. Vector shows that it's a small gap between the variator belt and the cover. It's noticeable, but the issue is easily fixable. The vibration is only felt during sudden acceleration. According to Vect, the culprit is not so much the engine, but the drive shaft. But it wouldn't hurt to rubberize the footrests. Also, another thing is that at idle, there's a feeling that the engine is about to stall, but then, as if realizing, it resumes operation. Clearly, it is necessary to fine-tune the control unit. Clearly, the drawbacks associated with it are insignificant. Diesel, especially with a CVT, is unusual for motorcycles. But how smooth and pleasant did this motorcycle turn out to be? The bike's practicality at 2.5 litres per 100 kilometres at 90 kilometres per h, its handling and dynamics are all appealing and contribute to its overall attractiveness. Most importantly, don't forget which hose to use at the gas station. And the design is excellent. It was created by a young Dutchman, Jano Schurgers, who trained in the design studios of Aprilia and Alfa Romeo. Vect set out to create the perfect motorcycle, and it seems he succeeded. He also collaborated with Daimler-Benz on a project for a diesel touring motorcycle with a 1.5 litre V-shaped diesel six-cylinder engine with two crankshafts and a control unit that would deactivate half of the engine on the highway. On our planet, there is much more natural gas than oil, so it's better to preserve oil for plastic production. Evo Products collaborates with Shell Conglomerate, which has learned to create liquefied gas that remains liquid at room temperature. An engine fueled by such fuel is more powerful than diesel, and at the same time, it has lower exhaust grid component levels. And this was just the beginning of the journey. But suddenly in 2013, the company halts the production of track motorcycles. The company's website announced that they failed to find enough customers to stay afloat. What should a utilitarian military motorcycle be like? It should have excellent off-road capability, a large range, and high reliability. It would also be nice if it had the ability to run on any fuel, whether it's biodiesel or kerosene. Craftsmen from CA in the 2000s created a machine based on the Kawasaki KLR 650. Dressed in desert camouflage or olive color, the HTDM 1030 M1 is actually a Kawasaki KLR 650 with an engine modified to run on military grade fuel by HTD Diversified Technologies from Hesperia, California. All military organizations in NATO require their vehicles to be able to run on diesel fuel or biodiesel in peacetime and on aviation fuel JP8 or kerosene during military operations. These requirements mean that everything from jeeps to jet aircraft are forced to use the same fuel, which will reduce confusion in the supply and transportation of different types of fuel. Thus, American military motorcycles were required to run on diesel.
HTD started with a water-cooled Kawasaki KLR650 and used its engines with a 5-speed gearbox, reducing the displacement to 584 cubic centimeters. The engine was modified in a special way to accommodate the very high compression ratio required by diesel. It's not an overly powerful power unit, as it only produces 30 GP. But due to its good torque, the 166 kg motorcycle can accelerate to 100 in 9 seconds and reach a speed of 150 km. At the same time, the fuel consumption is only 2.5 liters per 100 km. Like all military motorcycles, the HTD M1030 M1 must meet the strict requirements of Army and Marine Corps life. It should be able to cross streams of half a meter in depth and have the capability to travel over 600 kilometers on a single tank. The 16L tank allows for over 640 kilometers of travel without refueling. It also features a powerful 280 mm front brake disc to bring the vehicle to a stop within 120 meters. It provides an alternate method for transporting messages, documents, and light cargo between different units in the system. The M1030 can transport forward observers, military police, and reconnaissance personnel. The dimensions of the M1030 design make it highly mobile on all roads and rough terrain. Roger Flynn who's had a love for motorcycles all his life, owns F1 Engineering Incorporated, which makes the engine parts for the bike. Fred Hayes, who owns Hayes Diversified Technology, has been partners on the motorcycle project with F1 Engineering for more than seven years. Hayes Company is responsible for the rest of the bike pieces that make up this bike frame and things such as the tires that are shipped from other U.S. companies or imported from abroad. Amazingly, more than 1,800 individual pieces comprise the bike. We paint components to military specifications. A few, few of these components you can see here, and these are finished and ready to go into the end assembly process. What you see here is a finished rolling chassis. When the engines are finished and tested, we install them in the rolling chassis, we add the electrical system, the plastic components. Eventually. Hayes introduced the HTD M1030 M1 model for the production of diesel motorcycles from 2004 to 2008. The US Marine Corps acquired 440 1030 models. British and European NATO countries did not specify the numbers. Later, company released enhanced version. There, engine displacement raised to 670 cc, resulting in 10 to 20 percent power increase. The engine also became multi-fuel. It operates on diesel, gasoline, biodiesel, and five varieties of aviation kerosene. In general, yes, almost everything that burns.
Today, a decommissioned diesel soldier occasionally appears for sale, and its uniqueness and high public interest make such a purchase very desirable.